From today's Gospel reading from Matthew 4, we read from verse 4. It is written, so far God's holy word, the brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Temptations. They're all around us, hounding our every step, nipping at our heels. Doesn't matter what you're doing or where you're at, you face temptations on a daily basis. We see the food commercials that entice us to eat what the doctor tells us not to, quickly followed by weight loss ads prompting us to work toward accomplishing that beach body that is probably improbable for most of us to achieve for a small, meager sum. We see the car that we've always wanted sitting out in the parking lot where we've just walked out of the shopping mall. We admire its style and we wish, boy, I had one of those. May, may walk past a travel agency admiring the vacation spot that they're advertising, envious of others who get to go to places we only dream of. We may watch that person of the opposite sex walk by and wish we were only 10 or 50 years younger. The simplest and most benign things seem tempting to us, don't they? We know we shouldn't, but maybe we can if no one's looking. Our Lenten Sundays look at the events of Jesus' life leading up to his passion and death on the cross. And this morning, we kick things off with Matthew 4 and the temptation of Jesus by the devil. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Again, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately after being baptized in the Jordan prior to his beginning of his public ministry, Jesus is led out into the barren wilderness region specifically to be tempted by the devil. Now the word tempted is parazon in the Greek and it can also be understood as meaning being tested. The point is that the tempter, the devil, Satan, attacks Jesus at a point and at a time where he might be susceptible to spiritual combat. And the evil foe will come at Jesus on three fronts. The first front is a challenge to Jesus' true identity. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loves of bread. Now, is there really any question in the devil's mind about Jesus being the Son of God? No, not really. He knows who he he is. He knows what he's capable of. The challenge is whether or not Jesus is going to play the game to prove that he's the Son of God by becoming sort of a bread king, if you will. I mean, was the Lord hungry? Well, after 40 days and 40 nights, he's probably famished. Jesus' ability to perform miracles and feed multitudes will later be demonstrated. Not only could Jesus make bread from these rocks, he will multiply a child's meager little lunch 
into a feast for thousands. It was never a matter of could Jesus do it, but would. Would he play the game and prove himself to the devil? Jesus chooses not to. But he answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus quotes scripture to the devil. He tells him what God has to say, reciting from Deuteronomy 8, and God humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The Exodus people had brought everything they could carry with them on, from Egypt for that journey to the promised land. They were seeking to take care of themselves and providing for their material needs. God simply waited for them to consume the last of everything they had brought so that he could then teach them to depend on his divine providence, to trust him rather than depend on themselves. And if Jesus had made bread from the rocks, the devil wouldn't have stopped there, and Jesus knew it. And so he replies, not with his own words, though the fact that he is the word made flesh kind of makes scripture his words, but he answers the evil one by quoting the sacred text. Game on. The devil begins round two. He takes Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem, the one that overlooked the Kidron Valley, hundreds of feet below the summit. Now there was this rabbinical tradition that said that the Messiah would appear at the temple and would stand at the highest point to reveal himself to the nation. So that's what the devil's got in mind when he blows, throws the challenge. So if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot on a stone. The devil's a quick study. He chooses a couple of select Bible passages out of context to make his point. Reminiscent of this morning's Old Testament reading from Genesis 3, where the devil slithers up to Eve, hissing in her ear, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Knowing full well God had specified one particular tree they were to stay away from. Oh, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Satan doesn't try to out and out persuade Eve not to believe, only to doubt God. And it worked, wreaking havoc upon the generations of, of humankind. And that's what Paul is referring to in today's epistle to the Romans when he writes, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The devil's testing Jesus at the point of his power and his abilities for the sake of of showing off, for appearing glorious to humankind by means of grandstanding. But Jesus refuses the bait. Quoting scripture, again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. A quote from God's word where he told Israel, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa, an event that, by the way, didn't turn out very well for Israel. Jesus refused to be a wonder worker whose exploits might draw fascination, but not faith from others. Two strikes, third pitch on the way. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. 
He no longer attempts to raise doubts in Jesus' mind about his own identity. That's obvious. That track wasn't going anywhere. Instead, the devil offers Jesus an easy out, an alternative to the suffering, crucifixion, and death that laid before Jesus. Take it easy. You don't have to suffer and die for all this. Just worship me and it can all be yours, he hisses into Jesus' ear. Consider how hard it had to be in Jesus at this point. Hey, you're hungry. Just make a little bread and have your fill. And if you're the one everyone's expecting, well, give them a show. Watch all the crowds gather around. And you really don't want to die for these people, do you? Well, just make an alliance with me and you won't have to. It would have been so easy for Jesus to simply set aside his holy mission and take the easy route. But he didn't. Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus again he turns to the word of God to show that true faith is not attempting to see how far one can push God to meet our wishes. Faith is an attitude which opens our wills to God, allowing God to fulfill his will in us, and through us. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. The devil tried to make the faith a religion that catered to materialism, giving priority to people's desires for comfort and plenty. When Jesus did show compassion and fed the crowd, they responded trying to mob him and force him to become their bread king. The evil one tries to redirect the Messiah's task to one of being a wonder worker. Make a religion of entertainment, of proving oneself over and over again with the need to always do, do newer, do more, do better. He attempted to make Jesus make a religion that would be political as he would align himself with the powers and principalities of the world in order to avoid the suffering, the shame, and the death that was required for the redemption of humankind and the salvation of the world. The devil tried to get Jesus off course. But Jesus stood steadfast with God's word. And he did all of this for your sake and mine. That's the steadfast love and faithfulness of God on full display in Jesus who, as the Bible describes us, though he as was in the form of God, did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death, even death on a cross. Because of Jesus remaining steadfast with God's word, we can rejoice with David. We can echo his joy. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. And although the devil left him and withdrew until a more opportune time, as Luke puts it, we still deal with the tempter and temptation on a daily basis. There remains the temptation to judge people based upon our preconceived bias. The temptation to think disparagingly about the motives of what other people say and do. The temptation to do the things we know are wrong using the excuse while well, everyone else is doing it. The tempter still whispers in our ears, did God really say? But here's the deal. It is no less than the Lord himself who sets the pattern for how we are to respond. It is written. Jesus goes to the word of God to counter the evil one's attempt to ensnare him by his cunning and deception. So, be steadfast with God's word, knowing that in it the Spirit speaks, and from it God surrounds you with shouts of deliverance by his redeeming grace and mercy in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And all God's people said, 
Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise.